Welcome to Formal Charge. In the past few videos, we've used Lewis structures, like this one, to show the arrangement of electrons around atoms in a molecule. So this molecule here is carbon dioxide. There's one carbon bonded to two oxygens. This Lewis structure tells us there's two double bonds, one to each oxygen. But how do we know that this is the correct Lewis structure, the most accurate representation of where those electrons are for a molecule of carbon dioxide? Why isn't it something like this? This Lewis structure for carbon dioxide works as far as the octet rule is concerned. Every atom in this molecule has eight valence electrons, just like the original Lewis structure. So if they're both valid by octet rule, which one's going to be the actual structure? Now there's two ways to go about answering that question. One is to look for experimental evidence. For example, the bond lengths have been analyzed for different molecules. And for carbon dioxide, we could look up that the bond length between carbon and oxygen is the same in every molecule. So that would mean this purple diagram over here would have to be correct because there's only one kind or one length of bond present. But let's say we didn't have that experimental evidence or we, didn't, we couldn't look it up. We could still find out which of these two Lewis structures is the more accurate one. And the way to do that is by using something called formal charge. And formal charge is just a method of keeping track of electrons on atoms in a molecular ion. It basically helps us figure out the distribution of electrons. So let's look at formal charge for the same molecule, carbon dioxide. Before we look at how to find formal charge, there's two terms we want to be familiar with. One is bonding electrons. And bonding electrons are simply the electrons we find in bonds. So we're going to find two in one bond, two in another bond, two in this bond, and two in this bond. The next thing we want to look at are non-bonding electrons. And non-bonding electrons are exactly what they sound like. These are going to be the electrons that are not in bonds. So this electron is a non-bonding, this one, this one, this one, and these as well. Now that we've identified what non-bonding and bonding electrons are, this idea of formal charge is going to be pretty easy to figure out. Essentially, formal charge, and we do this for each atom, so we're going to find the formal charge on this first oxygen, this middle carbon, and this second oxygen. And we're going to do that by first figuring out how many valence electrons that atom usually has. So we're going to take those valence electrons the atom normally has, we're going to subtract out the number of non-bonding electrons, and then we're going to subtract out half the number of bonding electrons. So let's actually do this and see what it looks like. First, I'm going to look at this oxygen. And you may notice that this oxygen is exactly the same as the other oxygen in terms of the number of bonds and free electrons around it. So when I find the formal charge for this oxygen, I've also found the formal charge for the other one. So I'm going to quickly redraw this one so we can look at the number of electrons and bonds. So let's analyze this oxygen. Oxygen originally starts with six valence. And like we said, we're first going to subtract out the number of non-bonding electrons. So that's one, two, three, four. So this is minus four. And next, I'm going to subtract half of however many bonding electrons I have. For this oxygen, there are four electrons in the bonds attached to it. Two bonds means four electrons. So half of four. So the formal charge for the oxygen is going to be six minus four minus two, which is going to give me zero. So the formal charge, Fc, formal charge, on each oxygen is going to be zero. Zero there and zero there. I can do this same process for the middle carbon. This carbon has two bonds coming off of it in each direction for a total of four bonds. It originally comes with four valence electrons, and I'm going to start by subtracting out the number of non-bonding electrons, which is zero. I have no non-bonding electrons. And then half the number of bonding electrons. So there are four bonds for a total of eight bonding electrons. That means a formal charge for this one is also going to be zero. So I'll write that over here. The formal charge on this is zero. Now that we know the formal charges on each atom in this Lewis structure, let's just compare this to the other Lewis structure and looking at its formal charges. The other Lewis structure we thought about for carbon dioxide was carbon with a triple bond to one oxygen and a single bond to the other oxygen leaving the right number of valence electrons, obviously, on the oxygens. That means we have three situations to evaluate. One is going to be this oxygen. Then we need to evaluate the other oxygen, because now it's different. They have a different number of bonds, different number of non-bonding electrons. 
and then we need to evaluate the carbon in the middle. So let's look at each one of these. Starting with the oxygen on the left, we have six original valence electrons minus the number of non-bonding electrons, which is six, minus half the number of bonding electrons. In this case, we have one bond, so that's two electrons. Six minus six minus one is going to give us negative one for a formal charge on this oxygen. Now let's move on to the carbon. The carbon we know starts with four valence electrons. We have zero non-bonding electrons, and then we have half the number of bonding electrons. One, two, three, four bonds gives us eight. So four minus zero minus four is going to give us zero for a formal charge. Then the last oxygen is going to be, again, six valence electrons to start, minus the number of non-bonding electrons, which is two, one, two, minus half the number of electrons and bonds. So three bonds would give us six electrons and bonds. When we do this out, six minus two minus three is going to give us positive one. So the formal charges for this molecule are going to be negative one, zero, and positive one. So we've now figured out the formal charges on each atom for each of these different Lewis structures. Now how does this tell us which one is preferred? Well the sort of key idea for this whole thing is that the Lewis structure with formal charges closest to zero is going to be the preferred structure. So now if we go back to the Lewis structures we just drew and the formal charges we just assigned, we can see that the original one is going to be preferred because it has all formal charges of zero so you can't get much closer to zero than that. The one last thing I want to leave you with is that it's very easy to check your work for doing formal charges. And that's because the sum of all formal charges for each atom in the molecule or ion is going to add up to the overall charge in that molecule. So carbon dioxide is a neutral molecule and its formal charges all add up to zero, which is the charge on the neutral molecule. If we look at a different example, the cyanide ion, this is the structure for the cyanide ion. If we assign formal charges to this Lewis structure, we're going to see that the carbon is a negative one and the nitrogen is a zero. Adding up these formal charges gives us negative one, which is the overall charge on this ion. The last thing I'm going to leave you with is a quick rule of thumb on assigning formal charges. If you're given some compound, let's say AB for simplicity, and you end up with two Lewis structures, AB and let's say A. Obviously this is not a realistic situation and I'm not drawing in electrons here, but if you come up with two Lewis structures, they both make sense and they both have the lowest possible formal charge, meaning in one Lewis structure A is minus one and B is plus one, and in the other one you do A is plus one and B is minus one. Again, this is just a hypothetical situation. How would you know which of these to pick? Well, in this case, what you want to make sure is that the more electronegative element has the negative formal charge. So let's say B was a more electronegative element. That would mean that this would be your correct Lewis structure because the more electronegative element has a negative formal charge. That wraps up our lesson on formal charge. Write down any questions you have in your notes and bring them with you to class.